Hi there, folks, and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. It is time. I've got all the parts I need now to put the old StarCraft back together. This is a 1976 StarCraft with a 120 horse Mercruiser, 2.5 liter Iron Duke motor. We pulled the outdrive off of this thing and we pulled the water pump off of it. We did some inspections. We have one broken bolt I still need to remedy and get out of there. We're going to attack that first because without that being removed, I can't put anything else back together very well. I can, but I'd rather do it while it's all apart. So let's get this thing pulled around to the shop and let's see if we can get it all put back together, get it running, and then winterize it. It's that time of year. Welcome to November. We have a beautiful day out today. It's amazing. An amazing fall day. Absolutely amazing. I wasn't expecting it to get this warm and it is, what? Weather unavailable. Are you kidding me with this crap? Anyway, it's 67 degrees out here right now, which blows my mind. It's a little breezy, but that's okay. As long as the sun's out, we got a clear sky. It's gonna be a beautiful day. We're gonna pull this thing around in front of the shop because I may have to weld on that bolt, that broken bolt to get it out. I may not, let's see. But let's pull it on out and get busy after it. Alrighty, so I've put the vice grips on here. I've twisted and turned and everything else under the sun. It's not moving. It's not giving up, giving up its treasures. So I've covered up the gas tank just to avoid any splatter getting back there. I am going to, and the fire extinguisher is handy right here. I'm going to attempt to weld one of the techniques you can use is weld a nut onto it and what that'll do is that'll drive heat down into the bolt and I may break this off two or three times and I may actually get it broke off down to flush but that's fine I'll keep welding on it and it'll drive heat down into that bolt and hopefully break the bond that it has going on right now let's see if I can get this uh, glued on here I like to do is wiggle it back and forth. You might get it to break loose. And it may just be that this thing's just twisting off too. That happens. That's what it feels like it's doing. Yep. Now that broke it off quite a bit deeper in there, which that's fine. about flush with it that's okay we're just driving some heat down in there may or may not help we'll see worst case I drill it out run a tap in it I'm trying to avoid that We'll try it one more time. Hmm. 
Well, I guess we're down to drilling and tapping the darn thing. It's worth a try, though. Now, to give myself a fighting chance of getting this thing centered up, I'm going to go ahead and bolt this piece back on. That'll get it lined up with the holes that are already there. And we'll snug down all my bolts. Now I've got a transfer punch here that has a, I don't know if you have, you can buy these a set of these relatively cheap. They're handy. You can put that right down. You find one that fits that hole size, put it right down in there, and you will put a center punch right in the middle of things. And I spin it around while I'm hitting it. That's going to give me my best chance of finding the center of that hole. Now I have a drill bit that is the size of this hole here. And these are 5 16 bolts. The drill bit's a little bit bigger than that, obviously. But now I can go in there and I'm going to use my drill. I'm going to drill in there just a little bit to get me a nice straight start. All right, we're gonna go ahead and... Let's just see what kind of dent that left me. All right, we got our... That pilot drill started out pretty good and I've got my little, little drill bit here. I'm just going in here. I'm trying to keep everything perpendicular and square and not break this little guy off. Applying a light pressure, just letting the drill work. So when it breaks through, I don't want it to break my drill bit off. Now some of you have mentioned, have you ever used a left hand drill bit? Yes, I have. Um, what the left hand drill bit would do for you is when you're breaking through, if it decides to grab, it might actually just back it out once you've got enough uh, thread relief going on here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and, I got a shorter drill bit here, a little stockier one. I'm gonna take it out to the next size with it. There, we're through that one. Next thing I'm going to do is run through it with uh, my tap drill size, which is a F letter F drill or 0.257 diameter. But I'm going to go ahead and chase these threads here. I've got a 5 16 18 tap here. I'm just going to go in here and clean these threads up on these other ones. Then I'll use this tap to chase that last little bit there. Hopefully I can get it to pick up the lead and do a real good job for me. Now to go find me a 5 16 or a 257 drill or a quarter inch drill to work as well. Alright, this is the size I need to run in there before I run my tap in. Wish me luck. It felt like we got it all out of there. Might have it. Might have it.
that's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see that. I got the end of that bolt is right here stuck on the end of my tap. Backed it right out with the threads. That's awesome. That is a, there it goes. That's what you call a fantastic outcome. I'll blast this in. Blast that out. Just run it down in there one more time now. Then I'll run some air down in there. Probably can spin it in by hand now. Oh yeah. Yeah, that went as deep as the rest of them went. Success. The good news is now we have that all apart. Or got that broken stud out. In this situation, one broken stud can delay you as long as the entire job should normally take to do. Looks like some more pieces came out there. Yep, we'll blow that out. Awesome. That's a little bit loose, but this thing also isn't holding a lot of pressure, so I don't have to tighten it crazy tight. So I think it'll work just fine. Now I'm gonna take my old handy dandy wire wheel here, and we can clean this face off and get it ready for a gasket. I'm gonna use my gasket scraper on that for a minute. I mean to tell you that gasket's petrified on there, but it's coming off. Alrighty, that surface is all prepared. This surface is all prepared. I say it's uh, let's get some gaskets and get this thing put back together on the front end here. Alrighty, now that we got the thermostat housing back on, we've got our little thermostat sending wire back on. We're going to tighten that down just a little bit, just like that. We've got the, uh, got to get some clamps here to put this hose back on. Now, for now, I'm going to go ahead and put the water pump back on. We'll get that done. Tell us fall, you hear them geese are flying in. <laughs> Beautiful thing. Well, you guys might be asking yourself, why in this part of the video are you back out here leaning against the boat out in the shed? Well, I'll tell you why. A guy's battery goes dead on his camera and he doesn't realize it. And that's what you saw right before this segment. So I'm going to have to take a minute and catch you up on what I did get done after the battery died. But also in the meantime, it's probably been two weeks. I've been waiting on the weather. And yeah, I can only film on the weekends because, you know, a guy's got a job. And uh, the daylight just ain't there after 5 o'clock right now. And when a guy gets home from work, he just got to do what he can do. Anyway... It's Saturday. We're deep into November right now. I'm actually going to go help a buddy of mine butcher 30 turkeys tomorrow. That's going to take a few minutes. And then the cool part is I had some parts for the boat here. I had a, a, a little radiator hose, a little small one, you know, not a radiator hose, but a little cooling hose and a belt. And my sweet little dogs uh, found those on my desk and proceeded to uh, make them useless. He chewed on them a little bit. So if all goes well today, we'll get the boat back up in the yard here. I'll catch you up on where I'm at. 
According to the USPS tracking service, that hose should be here today. And I picked up a belt already. And if I get really, really lucky, I'll get the outdrive put back together. I'm gonna to show you guys an alignment tool that I purchased that I, I some fee folks left a comment and says, hey, you might wanna use that alignment tool if your motor mount's been removed from the front or it's been running out of adjustment like we saw the when I took this apart, the bolts had rattled loose. So we're gonna get, get that back together. And uh, hopefully hook this thing up some water today, run it, Make sure it's all back together because boy, howdy, I'm gonna get out there on the Mississippi next year and uh, see if we can catch some fish. Because after riding up and down the east coast of Iowa, as it were, I uh, spotted a lot of fish on my fish finder and other objects underwater, obviously. And I just can't help but think there are some monsters out there. I watch videos, I, I see other people that go fishing on the Mississippi and by golly, they catch some fish. And uh, I want to get better at catching some of those fish. Uh, I got all the equipment. Just got to do it. Anyway. So uh, I dressed a little warm. I put on a t-shirt and a Hawaiian shirt and my coat. But Lord have mercy. It's too hot for coats yet. It's in the 30s. Whew. This ain't winter. Anyway, we got some beautiful sunshine gonna happen today. Oliver, what you doing? He might be one of the culprits of relieving me of some of my rubber parts for my boat. But uh, I looked in the mirror this morning when I was giving myself a haircut whilst thinking, boy, you got a face for radio. And uh, finished cutting my hair. Took my shower that said, let's get on with the day. It's past nine o'clock, got a late start. I was actually letting it warm up a little bit because it started off at 35 degrees this morning. Now it's up to 38. That's warm enough. That's uh, t-shirt weather for sure. And uh, I'm gonna finish off my pumpkin pie for breakfast here. I got me a little bit of chocolate milk because I gotta, gotta watch my sugars. And uh, let's drag this back up to the shop and make it happen. Now, if you haven't liked the video already, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. And if you made it this deep into the video, you're some of my biggest fans. And uh, let's hit that subscribe button because most of the people that watch my videos, over 75% of the people that watch my videos uh, aren't subscribed. Hit that red button. Don't cost you a dime. Helps me out, helps me keep these videos coming. And uh, cause yeah, these aren't cheap. It, it, it takes some money to keep things going. Uh, even if you don't think about the parts, you gotta think about the software I use and the equipment I use, camera equipment I use. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, I had one of my little receivers that go on the camera. My dog got a hold of that. That was a $189 bill. Pfft gone it happens now i'm gonna have to put my stuff in a little different location in my recharging area because these little monsters there he is he's behind you he's behind you right there if you turn around you might be able to see him there's one there's the other hey mercury you say hi you say hi buddy what you doing there What you doing there? Lucy and Mercury over here. My breakfast is done. Okay, I know I'm getting a little bit washed out by the outdoor light. I don't know if I can cut that down some here. Maybe I can. Does that help? Oh, it helps tremendously. All right. Uh, before I show you the inside of the boat here, I want to show you something on the outside that's yeah, it's a must have, I feel. Uh, somebody, I saw people use this before and I'm like, it's a, it's got, I gotta have one. Uh, especially if you got these inboard outboards, right? And it's a shaft. 
and it's it's heavy this is solid steel and it's got another bushing that i think if you have another piece removed in here that you can stick in there and use it for an alignment tool but this is aligning all the stuff that's going up inside up in here and right now because you got bearings and your drive final drive or drive shaft right now i've got it in there but it doesn't go all the way in it's tight but i'm going to show you why it's tight and i'm just gonna let that kind of hang there for now inside the boat i have the engine propped up just a little bit because i've got the motor mount off and what i'll do is i'll put the motor mount back in place bolt it down and then i'll check this alignment again this thing should slide all the way in freely and bottom out right now it's not currently doing that i can actually wiggle it and force it and and get it in there but it's tight it's and it doesn't bottom out yet but that's because i have the actual engine is misaligned right now because i did have if you guys saw uh the part for part one when i was taking this part the motor mount that's got a, a trap nut on top and bottom of the motor mount the one was loose and uh i tightened it back up brought it back up uh i don't think anything had actually moved but that's what got me thinking i need this alignment tool in case something has moved or settled over the course of time so now let's jump back into the inside of the boat. I'm going to show you where I'm at. We're going to get the motor mount back in place. I'm still waiting on the hose to show up, and I'll show you what hose I'm waiting on. So it would be this hose here. This is the one that my dog's chewed up and I don't have back yet. And uh, got another one coming. Anyway, this is the motor i got sitting on a stand right now. We'll get back to that in another time. Okay, here we are back inside the boat looking at the engine this is the stuff that my battery died on you know i had this bolted on but i didn't show putting the alternator back on the alternators an alternator water pump the water pump back on so that's on the hose is on this hose is the one i'm waiting on right now hopefully it'll show up today if it don't chances are i won't be starting this motor this video but we're going to go ahead and put the i've got the uh, alternator bracket the the holds the tension on the belt i got to put that back on bolt that in place and then we're going to put our motor mount back in place so let's get that stuff done and then we're going to go to the back of the boat and wrap that up then all that's left to do is put this hose on hook water up to it and let her rip tater chip um here's the old thermostat out of it here the new one is in here right now all sealed up ready to rock and roll okay we got the motor mount reattached back to the block here got it setting back down i'm gonna get me two new bolts to put here i've got bolts here to line it up right now so it's just sitting under its own weight i'm gonna get some fresh ones some fresh washers nuts to bolt that back down um and then uh this part will be done on the front part of the motor like i said the last thing i need to get yet is this hose to go from here to here and that should be good now what had happened out on the water over who knows how many months of time so we can get in the shot here is this nut here backed off and was sitting clear down here but the nice thing is none of this stuff had moved so the height of the motor and the up and down adjustment was not impacted at all so now I'll, I'll make sure this is good and tight again so this is sandwiched and locked in place so it can't move and we'll get my two new bolts in here and then the front of the motor is done and complete with that being said, let's go to the back of the motor. Let's start putting the outdrive back together and reinstall it back onto the boat so that part's buttoned up. Now you can do what I do or dot. I don't care. It's up to you. You're a free man. You're a free woman. You're grown. You can do whatever the hell you want. I write what vehicle or what boat these batteries come out of so when I put them back in, I can put them back in where they came from. We are going to do a little testing here with this battery. I've got this top down tester. Check the link below to where to buy one. Check the link below to the video that tells you all about this. And I tested a whole bunch of batteries in that video and show you more about how it works. But we're gonna do a battery test here and we're gonna see how this one's holding up. So the cold cranking amps is 650 on this one. It's gonna test it and tell me how this battery is currently doing. Now this boat hasn't been out in the water so it's saying the battery's good it just needs to charge it's it's charged at 65 percent it's 79 percent healthy it's at 580 cold cranking amps 
So it's not bad. The battery's good. It's not excellent. It is good. But I'm going to put my, like I do all my batteries in the winter, I'll put my battery tender on it. It'll bring it up. It'll hold it all winter. It should be good for next summer. Anyway, check out the link below for this guy. It's really handy to have one of these. So you know the condition of your batteries. Before you stick them back, waste the time stick them back in your boat and find out, you know, five weeks later that the battery's toast anyway and you should have replaced it. Saved yourself a lot of headache. All right, now that we have the motor mount back in place and setting down under the weight, we're going to double check this fit again. This is lining up several diameters to make sure they're all in line with one another. So when you reinstall your outdrive, it all goes back together smoothly with no binding and, and, and also not creating any extra wear. So now I've got it in all the diameters. You should feel it just go. There, I felt a bottom out right there. This moves freely. Actually has just a tiny bit of play there. So that means nothing's in a bind. Perfect. That's what we want. So yeah, that's a lot of tool to check one thing, but what it can take out if you don't do it right is a lot of money. So you don't want that to happen to you. Now what I did here is I left all my gaskets and my pieces sitting right on here just like this. So when it came time to put it back together, that made it easy to know which gasket was on bop, top, bottom, and everything else. Because if everything's working fine, there's no reason to change up what's going on. And these gasket kits will come with multiple gaskets here. That, and you just got to find the one that lines up with what you have. Like this one here. Looks like matches that one there. So that's my top one. I've already matched my bottom one and put it back in place. Also, you know, making sure you get this in the right direction. Obviously, if you put it in the wrong direction, you're going to see some really weird things happen to your water pump impeller. So the next thing I'm going to put on is my new plate. And while we're this far, I want to remind you, there's a little O-ring right here that comes in, a, in your kit. Make sure you, if you don't replace it, make sure the one you got there is good. But I would suggest put your new one in because you got fresh rubber, right? And don't forget it. When you go to put your pieces back together, this seals the top part of your gearbox and the bottom part of your outdrive gearbox together. And make sure the oil goes where it's supposed to go and doesn't leak out. Because what will happen, if you don't do that, it could leak out. All the oil will drain out down and leave the top of your gearbox completely bone dry. And you will smoke that sucker so fast... It will not make you happy. So now that we got these new gaskets in place, I'm excited to be finally putting this thing back together. It's been sitting apart a long time, ever since I hit that sandbar. So I'm going to take all these extra pieces here, set them aside. I don't need them. The next thing we're going to put on is the water pump, housing, and the impeller. So let's get our brand new impeller. Like I said before, on the other video when I disassembled it, the old impeller that was in there actually wasn't awful. I still have it right here. Has a little curvature to it, has a little wear to it. But you know, that thing would have lasted me a whole nother summer, I'll bet. But you know, if you go to the trouble of taking this all apart and you're gonna put it back together, don't put this one back in and go, well, I'll just replace it later on. No, do it now, just do it now. We have a new drive key, a new pin here. A new tube and you guys can be the judge of what you want to reuse or not reuse some of the stuff on your old pump might be good some of it might not be good so right now i'm going to go ahead and put this as the new drive key might as well use a new drive key don't throw your old one away so that drive key goes right there in that flat right now i'm going to take a little bit of grease marine grease and put on that to make sure that that sucker does not come off while I'm trying to put it together. Now you guys might ask me, what, Michael, what marine grease are you using? Well, I'm using this Lucas marine grease. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I'm not saying it's the best grease. I'm just saying it's what I use. That's, it. That's all there is to that. So I'm gonna stick a little bit of that right there. I'll smash the key right into it. There we go. A little extra grease on the shaft won't hurt a thing. Matter of fact, you like to have a little grease on there because the next time you go to take it apart, you want to make sure the doggone thing will come apart. Now what you're going to see when you put this on here is your impeller is going to be touching your gasket there. And that's fine because once it's in the housing, it won't be. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'll take a, I'll put a little bit of, I like to put a little, let's lift this back up. I'll put a little bit of grease on this face. And on the face of these little fins on the impeller. What that's going to do for me, let me get my key line back up now. There we go. Is it's going to allow this not to have a dry start. Now you want to have water, obviously, always have water on your impeller or on your lower unit, whether it's in the water or earmuffs or earmuffs, muffs, <laughs> before you start it up so you don't start these up dry. Because it only takes a few seconds of runtime and it creates a lot of friction really, really fast on these impellers against this inside this housing to just burn it up. It'll just heat up and it'll just melt itself to it. And I've seen people start their boats out of the water. They couldn't get it running in the water. This is funny. And I gotta tell this story because it's hilarious because people don't know what they don't know, right? Had a person back up into, now I'm gonna turn this clockwise, looking from the top down while pushing down on this. And what that's gonna do is force that impeller to seat inside this housing, just like that. Now looking down clockwise, I'm turning it. There you go. That went down nice and easy. It's easier than trying to force that up in there and line the key up. This is the way to do it, right? But anyway, this person backs down to the water and proceeds to not, their, their motor won't start. This was on a, this was on an outboard. It wouldn't start, wouldn't start, wouldn't start. And then, so they've decided to not hog up the ramp, which is nice of them not to hog up the ramp. They pulled back up, kept trying to start this motor. And lo and behold, it started. And they're revving it up and revving it up. And without it being in the water. And sure enough, they drop it back in the water. They're going boating for the day. They figure all their worries and miseries are solved. And that's not the case. So I caught the guy's wife walking back down to the ramp after parking the vehicle. And I just told her, I said, hey, um... Are you planning on being out long? And she's like, well, yeah. I said, you might want to keep an eye on your water pump or your water temperature, coolant temperature. I said, because you're going to run hot, most likely. I said, those boats and whatnot are not designed, or out, motors aren't designed to run outside the water without screwing up a water pump. And she's like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, really. Now, I don't know how the rest of the story or day went. But I certainly didn't want to see them get miles and miles and miles away from the ramp and have their doggone motor overheat and destroy their, dog, their, their motor. But anyway, so when you see stuff like that, see something, say something. Don't be afraid to tell people. You might save them a lot of heartache and maybe some expense. Now remember, this is a plastic housing. Don't get crazy. You don't have to tighten this stuff down till the water runs out of it, folks. These are, and these are nylock nuts that are on here typically. And so they're designed to lock themselves in place with the friction of the nylon that's built into the end of these. So you just bring them up snug. They're not gonna back off on you under, during operation. So just give those a little, just, if you tighten it till this cracks, you've gone too far. Now the water pump is installed. Beautiful, right? Now what I have to find, I gotta show you guys this. I had a tough time getting this tube out when I was pulling it out. Look at how much sand is around that tube. And I'm not sure, yeah, this one's coming out. Oh my goodness. So yeah, look at that. That's how much sand was just sitting down in there. So yeah, I got into the sand pretty good. Okay, there's a rubber bushing down in here that the copper tube fits into. I'm gonna put, I'll just put a little bit of grease on that, which is gonna help that just uh, get right back in there. And then this, we'll just stick right back on there like that. Now I'll find out when I go to set the other one on if I should have put the copper in the upper part first, but I'll be able to see that when I'm messing with it here in a minute. Alrighty, the last thing to do is just a little rubber flinger. My kit came with a new one. 
that fits right over here. Nice and tight. Let's put that right there. All right. All right, now in order to put this back together, I had the counter rotational skeg on here. I had to pull that back off to allow access to this bolt that goes up through the bottom right here because you put that one on and then you can still reach through a hole down that's going to be up here to put your counter rotational skeg back on. So I had to pull that off. Just wanted to show you that up close so you don't forget that because I've seen where people just leave that out or they don't put the nuts back on the two studs that go through here and they're just relying on basically these three other bolts up here to do the job and this one bolt back here and omitting these two nuts. There's nuts like this that go under here to hold that on. So don't, don't leave any of it off. It's all engineered to be there. No exceptions. I'm trying to get you in a position so you can see what I'm doing. You want to make sure you get all the gaskets off of this surface. You can do this after we set this on here, and that's what I'm going to do. That's okay. It'll be more solid to do it once I got it hooked to the bottom piece again. What I have done here is I do have the grease on here. I got the O-ring back on here. I got grease on the pump tube, which that should all go back up in there. Just fine and dandy, it feels like. And then last but not least, I want to put a little grease on this little shift spline. I forgot to do that. Now, if all goes well, I can set this right back down on here. Now, once you've successfully seated this, you might have to bump it back up a little bit. You will have to bump it back up a little bit to get these nuts in here on there because they will not go on when it's fully down. So you got to have partially down and then lo and behold, you can get these nuts started. And once you got them started, you can take them down a little ways and then you can set this thing down. And the one with the red cap on it goes up front here. So we got that one there and we got the two that go underneath right about this area right here. Now what I like to do is I get that front one snug down. I'll get the back one right here in the very back. All right, I lost my sound for a little bit there. Batteries went dead on my receiver and my mic, so I had to charge them up. We're back out here. We've got, I want to just point out a few things. We've got a, a seal, O-ring seal that's right here. It's a square one that came with the kit. We also have put the O-rings, new two new O-rings down here. I've also put an O-ring right, let me get it over here. There's an O-ring that I put right here. I've got that held in place with grease. We've got our gasket over here on this face. And I've greased and lubed up this piece right here. We'll make sure this goes in with it vertical like that. We've also put grease in the slot right here where this shift lever makes contact. On the bottom down here, there's a slot that goes front to back. Make sure that's going front to back. Just because we talked about the other shift shaft here. Oops, on down inside here that we looked at a minute ago, that went front to back. All that's got to line up and go in together. And what we'll do is we'll feed this shaft in first, make sure it makes that first hole. It's got a healthy taper down on the end here, which helps it right up into the other things. We may have to jiggle the prop back and forth a little bit 
to make this shaft rotate a little bit to line up the spline. Once it lines up the spline, it should slide right in. You shouldn't have to use a hammer to put any of this together. Everything we've done here, we didn't have to use a hammer to put it together. It should all fit together. So now, with that being said, i got to move the camera. And I'm going to sit down beside here and see if I can get things lined up and shoved in. And get my bolts put in. And this will be hanging back on the boat under its own weight again. And I can start wrapping this up a little bit better. Well, there you have it, folks. All put back together, buttoned up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're going to add the... I added the hose to it. All that's left now to do, honestly, is I could put muffs on it and put the battery back in and fire it up. Nothing stopping me from doing that, other than I've got the block completely drained of any kind of water. I don't want to add any water back to it so it can just freeze and do me some damage, and I don't have to use any freeze this year if I don't want to uh, and make a whole mess out of that. So I'm going to call it a wrap. We got this back together. We're ready for next summer. This gear box and out drive is completely 100% serviced. Uh, I'm going to shoot some grease in this circ here. and There's one over here and I can call that done. Now, like I said, if you have to put any of this back together with the hammer, it's probably not going back together right. Everything should wiggle, snap, slide, go back together without a lot of force. You didn't use a lot of force to take it apart. It shouldn't take a lot of force to put it back together. That's my biggest words of advice for you when you're messing with one of these. Wiggle it, finagle it. Like here, it's in gear, right? And I had to move the prop down here to rotate the drive shaft up here, get the splines lined up. I had to jiggle that like twice, and all of a sudden it just went and popped right in. Anyway, everything I use in this video will be in the links below. Not everything, most everything I can think of. You know, the tools, the parts, and stuff. It doesn't really do me a lot of good to put a lot of these part numbers down in the description for you because yours may not be exactly like this one. I highly encourage you to go to marineengine.com or Crowley Marine. Those are two fantastic websites for looking up parts and part numbers. I've got the wrong glasses on. Anyway... I would suggest go there. You can look up your part numbers, order your parts, and get everything you need accurately to fit your particular model, make and model. Uh, because there are some variations for different years. When it comes to these out drives, you know, this is not an Alpha 1. I forget what this is called now. But the, it shows, I've got a breakdown that shows the years of what years and what out drives are used on, on these Merc Cruisers. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool information to have. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and throw this garage door open. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up and pull this out of here for tonight. So I can uh, finish doing some things I need to do tomorrow on it, which is going to be take the batteries out, take my fishing poles out, take the fish finders out and all that fun stuff and store them away for the winter. Put my cover back over it, stuff it back in the shed and see you next spring on this boat. And we'll do a springtime startup probably on this thing, getting it ready to go. I'll do a video on that. But now I can focus on everything inside this room, which there, as you saw in the background, probably when I was putting this gearbox and stuff back together is there's a lot of motors in here that need some work and lots of projects and fun things to go to work on this winter. So you guys stay tuned. I know it's going to be the off season for probably well over 90% of you, because even in Florida, I think a lot, a lot of people, once it gets down to fifties and sixties, the normal person doesn't go out fishing if i had 50s or 60s i'd be out on the water because you're in a climate that water don't freeze here the water gets pretty hard uh so hard you can't uh you can drive a truck on it right but uh so you're not putting a boat in that 
You guys get out there and have some fun. Enjoy every day as if it's your last. You don't know how much time you got on this old marble, so enjoy every minute of it. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And see you on the next video. That thumbs means I'm out. So good. So good to have that done. Whew.